Quet, Chiefess of the Gullah Geechee Nation. So how Hunter Chillin' to do crack me teeth and let Hunter Chillin' know what it flag mean. Now Hunter to see ya, we be Gullah Geechee anointed people. We be, we are, we have been, we continue to be. When you speak the Gullah language, it is devoid of time and space. So you have a continuum that goes on. It's not just about this moment. So you have the we be announced there. Gullah is people blessed by God. And this comes from our ancestry, both of the Angolans, which were the first groups of Africans kidnapped and brought into the Sea Island region because of their blacksmithing skill. And when they would sell Angolans at markets like Charleston, South Carolina, was the number one enslavement auction block in North America, they would announce it on the records. We have a cargo of Gullah for sale. So you had the corruption of the word Angola that first brought Gullah into use in North America. But later, they started kidnapping people from the Windward Coast, Rice Coast region of the motherland, Africa, which was once called al Bulan, that were named Gola, G-O-L-A. Right adjacent to those people, the Gola, were the Gizi, G-I-D-Z-I. -I. So the Gola and Gizi ethnic groups who are rice producers, Carolina Gold Rice, came in, they feel, from Madagascar. But the people who mastered it in this land were Gullah Geechis. And so in the Gullah Geechee Nation, all of the people, whether they're Igbo, Mandinka, Malinke, Yuriba, Gola, Gizi, Mendi, Temni, Feet, that ended up being enslaved in our Sea Island region to work cotton, rice, and indigo, ended up being called Gullahs or Geechees, even though their original ethnic groups might not have been Gola or Gizi. So you have here, we are and continue to be and will be and have been people blessed by God that also of Gullah Geechee ancestry. And because we've survived all we have, we know we are anointed by God to still be here. And so our flag, the blue, we believe the water to bring me up, the water going to take me back. So the blue represents the middle passage, the waters, the rivers that surround our islands. It also represents indigo, that crop that was one of the three major cash crops. The gold represents also a cash crop, the Carolina gold, but the biggest commodity was called black gold black cargo, us, that was sold at these auction blocks. The green represents the land, you see, and that land that we're still holding on to, that land that our ancestors even came from, that their blood, sweat, and tears are still in. And you see in the center of the circle, we are always in the circle because we are all still always create, connected by the creator. You see that this family tree is a traditional West African family tree. It is human bodies intertwined. So we're always inextricably tied to one another. We can never be separated from one another when we say we Gullah Geechee. So that's why even though him did way up here in Shy Town, he ain't separated from we back yonder in South Kakalaki. And I'm so glad for be at CSU and for all of we in the Gullah Geechee Nation. God bless you. Peace and blessings. Sister, let me ask you a question. Sure. You have stated that Geechee mm -hmm. is now it's a derivative of the true African word, which was Gizi, G-I-D-Z-I. -I. But being that we were not allowed to write. Right, yes. In 1739, due to the Stoner Rebellion that took mm -hmm. place in South Carolina, one of the largest yes. planned insurrections, as they call it, of African people, you had a man named Cato. They wrote of him called Jemmy, who was an Angolan, who led the Stoner Rebellion because Carolina, there was no North and South yet, existed, and La Florida existed. Georgia didn't exist. It was just a buffer zone. But La Florida was occupied by the Spanish, while the British were trying to occupy Carolina. Well, the Spanish king sent out a word that said, any, quote, Negro that shall escape Carolina, make it to La Florida, and convert to Catholicism, shall be manumissed and given arms and land. Well, when this was pronounced and unannounced, and Cato and those found out, Cato got some 20 plus Angolan men to make their drums again, make their weaponry, and they started marching. And all accounts say they were marching, beating the drums, saying, Levati, 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 on their way to Gracia Real de Santa Teresa de Mose, which is Fort Mose in St. Augustine today. Because of some of them getting caught en route, 
because of the militias coming down on them and then killing them as an example of what you should not do. There was an, uh, a scare, as they call it, through the colonies that caused them to say, well, you know what? We need laws against this. We can't have the Africans reading or writing. We can't have them playing the drum. We can't have them owning land. So because of the 1740 slave codes that now prevented people of African descent from reading and writing, because they could before that, in their languages of their own home and the languages of trade, all right? Now there was a ban, no reading, no writing by Africans. And because of all the years of that, people no longer spell Gichi, G-I-D-Z-I, -I, as it originally was. They started to spell it phonetically later on, so it becomes Gichi, G-E-E-C-H-E-E, -E -E, over here. Just like with Gullah, it's no longer G-O-L-A like it's still found in West Africa. It is now G-U-L-L-A-H. But now when linguists break down the spelling of Gullah, they actually find that this spelling means people blessed by God. And it got to be a blessing to survive all that. That's when you made reference to, I think you call it yellow gold or? Uh, Carolina gold. Carolina gold. And yes. that is the rice? That's the rice. That's so the Sea Island cotton was a particular long staple cotton that we grew. Mm -hmm. Carolina, gold, rice, and indigo. Those were considered the three cash crops. But the biggest cash crop they exploited, of course, was us. And they wrote of us as black gold.